All right, navigators, welcome to Wednesday night's battle stations. Let's all stand up nice, tall, and straight with our right hand over the center of our chest. Face the American flag. Follow the pledges. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Let's turn our attention to God's word. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Stay standing where we're going to do some singing before the lesson. All right, let's all stand up nice, tall, and straight, ready to sing out. We've got three songs. We're going to do the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, Jesus Loves the Little Children, and I'm Happy All the Time, the B-I-B-L-E. Sing out now. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. All right, now Jesus loves little children. Sing out now. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Alright, I'm happy all the time. All right, take a deep breath. Get ready now. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin, I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. All right, get your Bibles ready for the lesson. All right, take your Bibles and go to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. We're going to hit the next uh, lesson. Last week we had our first lesson with Adam, Adam's fall, man's fall, and sin. And tonight's lesson, we're going to talk about Enoch and Enoch's walk. Enoch's walk. Genesis chapter 5, verse 19 through 24. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 19, it says, And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 100, 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Enoch's stories held out through the ages. All these many years and these many, many generations have gone by and we're still talking about this man's walk with the Lord. And in verse uh, 22, it tells us that he walked with God 300 years. After he had his first son at 65, he lived 300 more years after he begat Methuselah. And it says, and he walked with God. For 300 years straight and consistently, Enoch walked, had a relationship fellowship with God. Go to verse number 24. It says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. 
And this is very much not only does Enoch's walk with God stand out so much, but how Enoch went away to be with God. And it says, and he was not, for God took him. Just like Moses on the mountain in the book of Exodus. The Lord took him, and the Lord here reached down, and he took Enoch. Now, how would you equate this and say, well, the closeness and fellowship was so great between Enoch and God. It was so great and as close as it could possibly be to the Garden of Eden. Remember, we're some generations outside of the Garden of Eden. And in the Garden, God, the Lord God, would come and walk in the cool of the day with man. Walk step in step, face to face, and have conversation. And this was probably the most close human relationship on the earth since the Garden of Eden a man ever had with the Lord to this point. The only thing separating them was space, location. So in his walk with God was so close that the only thing separating him and God and their closeness and their relationship was their actual physical presence and location. Enoch was not where God was, but Enoch walked with God nonetheless. Enoch could not see God, but he spoke to God and he fellowship with God. How would I like to say that we were so close in relationship that the Lord just wanted to pick up the conversation? And it tells us that Enoch, he was not, for God took him. This fellowship and relationship was so close that the Lord grew tired of being separate from Enoch. So the Lord simply took Enoch and brought him from where he was to where he was the Lord is, and continued that fellowship. And that relationship continued on, and it's still going on to this day, all these many, many, many years later. So how could it be said of us that could we have a relationship with God and be so close in a walk and a fellowship with God that people would talk about it thousands of years after we had left this earth and after we had left this world? How close and how great is our fellowship with God that he says, you know what? I'm tired of waiting on this. I'm bringing you home to be with me right now. So Enoch's walk, this fellowship. And the Bible also tells us more things about a walk and a fellowship with God. In Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it tells us that can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? I would say that Enoch exemplifies that in that he agreed with God and God agreed with Enoch. And and in Micah chapter 6, verse number 8, says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, what the Lord require thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Colossians 2, 6 says, as ye therefore have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. And that is our commandment as a New Testament believer to walk in Christ, to walk in the presence of Christ, to walk in the power of Christ. We can't make the journey alone. We must need his strength and ability. We must spend constantly in fellowship and in prayer and grow our companionship with the Lord to the point where we can serve him while we're on this earth better. But it seems that Enoch fulfills a lot of these things that we're told about later on in the Bible in the New Testament. To walk together except they be agreed. To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That is Enoch. Remember, Enoch's born after the Garden of Eden. Man has been expelled. Man has not seen God face to face in a long time. But Enoch's relationship with an unseen God is so great and he's so close in that fellowship that God says, that's the only barrier between me and Enoch, is that we're not hand in hand. So God took care of that, says, and he was not for the Lord took him. So we walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him. 
So we walk in Christ. We exemplify Christ. We don't fulfill the flesh. We fulfill the will of God, the will of the Spirit. And we can be an example like Enoch is. While Enoch walked with God, not only did he increase his fellowship and his closeness with God, but it made an impact on the society and the people around him in that all these many, many years later, we're still reading about Enoch's walk with God and how God just took him and bypassed his mortality and brought him straight to his presence. How close can we get to God? As close as we possibly can. Christ died on the cross for us. Christ cleansed our heart from sin. We're filled with the spirit of Christ. And one day, and one day very soon, the only thing that separates the believer from Christ is the sight, is the actual physical presence of the believer in the very, very presence of the Lord. And one day, he's coming. And he's going to do to the believers like he did Enoch. He was not, for God took him. And one day, that's what the world will say about all the believers when Christ returns. They are not here, for God took them.